Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Hope everybody had a wonderful, uh, long, beautiful uh, Memorial Day weekend. Hope everybody got their batteries recharged. Uh, one thing the market doesn't need is more recharging. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, I want to welcome uh, to all you guys who are watching us via Twitter, right? Or you are watching us via t YouTube. If you are watching us via YouTube, uh, kindly share, like, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff to keep helping the word, uh, keep progressing the word of uh, technical analysis in all its unbiased form. So thank you very much once again for all your uh, viewership. So let's talk about the tape. So we, we talked about uh, in nausea now how aggressive the market has been. Uh, this morning you woke up, you saw nothing short of exactly what's been happening. Uh, the market continued to be incredibly aggressive uh, over the weekend. Uh, this is obviously the news broke after I recorded the video, uh, but there was a preliminary agreement by both sides uh, for a debt ceiling raise. And as you can imagine, up, up and away we went. Uh, everything gapped up really, really aggressively uh, pre-market. Uh, congratulations for all you guys, uh, for all you guys who were long uh, NVIDIA or Tesla or any combinations of both. A uh, really, really big gap move. But the one thing we continue to talk about, and this is a very, very important aspect of trading in a euphoric since, uh, kind of scenario, is don't chase the high flyers, especially if you miss the move, if you miss the initial entries, don't try to recreate the past. Just don't do it because nothing good is going to happen. And if you look at what happened pre market, the stocks that had the biggest move up, right? And especially in the last two, three weeks, what happened, right? you jumped off the 12th floor. If you bought anything pre-market because the stocks are going to the moon and you love social media and that's all they keep on talking about, then you probably had a really, really poor trading day because anything you bought at the highs got killed, right? Let's realistically talk about it. It got killed. If you look in the video, no matter how great uh, NVIDIA has been acting, NVIDIA, right, is way off, right? All way off their pre-market highs, okay? Stock uh, was about $20 off their pre-market highs. You look at Amazon, uh, you look at Amazon, Amazon traded at 123s, it got down to 120s. Uh, Google went red on the day, uh, AMD went red on the day, Microsoft went red in the day. So you kind of get the point. So and, and, and the, the point of trading a euphoric hot market is always leave the stocks that had the big moves up, especially at the pre-market session. You're not missing anything. Why? You know, if you're not long NVIDIA, over the weekend in the 390s, why are you buying it at 420? Like, what is the what is the rationale behind it? What is the thinking behind? It? Because again, when you're laying down your money, you can't just say, "Well, I thought it was going higher." Okay, going higher, going lower. There's only two things that can happen. You could either go higher, or go lower. But again, the trade from Friday is completely different when the stock is up twenty dollars pre market, and that's a one thing that new traders continue to fall. Uh, trapped to. They continue to chase performance that is not there. And I've, I've always said, it, and I've always maintained this point, I don't trade momentum, okay? I don't. I trade the stocks that technically confirm that turn into momentum. By the time it hits scanners, you're making sales already, okay? You're, you're making sales. So the stock that broke out at $50 is not the same trade at 78. The stock that broke out at 100 is not the same trade anymore at 140. These are big expansion continuation channels. And eventually when they run out of chairs, it's very, very easily to, to lose your solvency status because the aggressive part of the retrace is always more, much more aggressive than the move up. I know it se seems that crazy enough, but that's exactly what's happening. It, here's the key element of what I thought about today. Number one, the AI names are going absolutely nuts. We'll get to uh, the pivots in a second. Uh, AI itself uh, is has its quarterly update uh, tomorrow, right? It has earnings after the cl uh, close tomorrow. Uh, stock has just been absolutely on fire. It's up another dollar today uh, after the close. Anything to do with AI is getting stronger. The one name that I think a lot of people are forgetting, it's actually an AI stock, right? You know, self-driving, allegedly. I don't know, maybe I'm stupid. But it's very, very close. Remember all of last week, we talked about levels that it needed to reclaim, needed to move. 
Again, we finally got to that top of the level that we talked about in last night's video in the weekend update. It finally tested the top of this linear regression line. If this true indeed is going to be recognized as an AI play, crazy to say, uh, if it just gets above this linear regression line, I know we talked about it on the weekend update. Uh, it tested that linear regression line today, but the difference between Tesla going up and going higher is this last line of supply here, this linear regression line. So keep an eye on Tesla in the next couple of days. If we can get a close above this linear regression line in this type of environment, you'll have when you when you talk about a stock can potentially stretch, that's Tesla. The question is, is it going to do so, right? We'll finally, we'll obviously know that answer uh, within the next couple of days, but it's definitely, definitely the one to watch because again, as much as I love every other stock that goes on big, big runs, when Tesla goes on a big, big run, it hits absolutely different. So it's very, very uh, important to understand. Here's the here's another cool point about what we used to see in the stock market and what we're seeing in the stock market now. Years ago, and we talk about this all the time, when you used to see you know these really big moves, the, the, the indexes would be affected and everything would go the same way. These days, if I told you today, Coke, right? Coke, Deer, Procter & Gamble, right? Target, right? Look, look at these charts. Target, uh, the energy stocks, anything anything that's not technology. If I would have showed you those charts, you would, th you would think the market is at 52-week lows. And that really shows you how the disconnect has really has really applied itself from the trading aspect versus the investor's aspect. You know, if, if you told me, you know, look what Coke is doing. I would thought, I would thought Coke is at 52-week highs, but it really does show you there's a huge disconnect and there's a big, big difference between trading vehicles versus investing vehicles. And as you can see by Coke, Procter & Gamble, um, you know, uh, Clorox, right? Clorox, we're in a completely different market if it's not technology. Technology, up, uh, consumer cyclicals, uh, um, energy, um, let's see here, energy, consumer cyclicals, um, what else, what else, soft drinks, anything to do that's not technology is being sold, the money rotations going into tech, again, the question is, when is this going to stop? I hope it never stops, but the reality is it will, and like I said yesterday, like I'm going to say today, you have to, absolutely have to be prepared on both sides of the market and leave all the extended stocks alone or start looking at the extended stocks for potential back tests if they start taking down the previous channel. That's very, very uh, important to understand. So for example, like look in the video, right? So in the video just had this godlike run. There's really nothing else to say. It had a godlike run. You guys remember the last time we talked about an inverted hammer, right? It was Google about two weeks ago. You guys remember that? So it put in this an inverted hammer and it necessarily doesn't need to, needs to, needs to go down the next day. But once it put in its inverted hammer, it gave a short-term shift in sentiment, at least shift and change. And for the next three days, it had a really, really nice move on Google. So check out in the video, right? Check out in the video. So in the video, it's kind of the same thing. Is it going to play out the same way? We don't know. But NVIDIA had a, a godlike run, as I said, has gone from 290 to 420. Okay, that's a huge, huge run. Don't think for a second this was today was the top. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but I wouldn't bet it is. However, there is an opportunity to take advantage for potential weakness. I will be watching for the next two days. If it starts taking down today's channels, I will give it a look for a potential short, only because, again, I'm not saying the stock is going back to 200. We're just taking, again, we're just taking advantage of the price action, the two-way price action, the same way we took advantage of would Google put it inverted hammer? That's kind of the same setup as I'm watching the video. Maybe it, maybe it happens tomorrow. Maybe it happens the next day. Maybe it doesn't happen at all. But again, it's one of those scenarios. Yeah, you can find still plenty of short, uh, plenty of long opportunities. But again, if they pull the market, don't you have to be prepared on both sides? So I definitely want to watch the video. Uh, I will say there was massive, massive continuation of 420, 440, 450 uh, June uh, calls that continued to flow into the name. Absolutely in incredible. Uh, a name like AI uh, is in a runaway train. They're going to run this thing into earnings tomorrow. God only knows what's going to happen in the earnings. Uh, but then we saw, you know, we saw today they came for the 40s. They came for the $50 calls. Pretty big size. And again, you can say whatever you want about the AI, you know, AI boom. 
uh, potential bubble, but the technology is real, right? Just because there was an internet bubble at one point doesn't mean we don't use the internet, right? As far as I know, you know, we are using the internet on a daily basis. So the technology is real. The question is, how is the stock uh, going to perform uh, into earnings right now? It's just an absolute beast and it's taking all the other uh, AI names with it. So definitely one uh, to watch for tomorrow. So the job is intact. How do we find value, right? We got to start looking because it's getting harder and harder every single day to find the stocks that are coming off the bottom. There's tons of stocks that are coming off the top, right? You have every tech, not, it's tech stock in the, in the book. You can literally go through all of them. But again, you want to avoid this, right? You want to avoid those big pulls on the stocks that had big, big runs. So here's some names I want to watch for the next couple of days. They probably don't confirm tomorrow just because they didn't close they didn't close anywhere near where I wanted them to, but it's you never know when a stock wakes up. Look at a name right, like Roblox, right? Roblox is now has been rejected four times on the 50-day moving average. This is a value setup. Whether it, it confirms or not is a whole different story. Again, we could be going, you know, I could be talking with the stock for the next week, not confirming, but the point is it's got it rejected four times in the 50-day. That's a stock I want to take a shot with just because... You know, we already know the important level of the 50-day moving average. We know the importance of what happens when they reclaim the 50-day moving average. So this is a name that if it wakes up in the next couple of days, could give that value pop. A name like Roku, right? Not exactly anymore the sexiest thing in the world, but it's kind of setting up like Roblox as well. Again, another name that got rejected off the 50-day moving average. I want to watch this thing for the next couple of days. If this thing starts reclaiming levels, let's keep an eye on it. Again, the importance of the 50-day moving average is well documented. I don't care what your trading style is. It's a very, very important level. So that's kind of where I'm rolling with for the next couple of days, watching uh, the extended names for a potential back test, just to take advantage of the, you know, take advantage of both sides of the market. And then I'm looking for names that are just, just trying to finally get above uh, their supply zones, whether they're Tesla, whether they're Roku, whether they're RBLX. So it's very, very important to, uh, to kind of just gauge the landscape and just sometimes you have to uh, drive your car a little bit differently because again, you can't drive your Bugatti or your high performance Ferrari in midtown Manhattan rush hour traffic in Times Square. It doesn't work that way. So you have to kind of gauge the landscape and kind of work the room and kind of recognize uh, where the sentiment lies. So let's talk about today's pivots. As you can imagine, uh, Tesla today was awesome. Uh, it gapped up into supply. It came back in. Uh, there was an opening range move that went to the next supply, came back in. We caught a great bounce into Tesla, almost went back to the highs. So Tesla was a great trader. But everything else today, as you can see here, everything else, it didn't, not a lot of names confirmed today. And, that, and that's a very, very important sign. That means it means stocks are getting tired. We were watching Google 2650, 27, never confirmed. Apple confirmed. The only problem is it only went up about 80 cents. Uh, Roblox uh, did not confirm. AI went absolutely nuts. Congratulations for all you guys who caught, caught AI. AI 38 needs to build, uh, obviously for experienced traders only. It doesn't trade like everything normal. So it took out the 38 level, right? It took out the 38 level here. Just absolutely went bananas. Uh, traded as high as the 45 and change. Uh, after hours, if you are along this thing, uh, great job. Uh, Path didn't confirm. Uh, Amazon didn't confirm. Uh, and here is again, and here's another perfect example. Netflix didn't confirm. But here's another, ex a perfect, perfect example. When a stock gets tired, right? When stock gets tired and it puts in an inverted hammer, you could take advantage. Again, I'm not saying that this is the top of NVIDIA, but look at the pivot here, right? 40640 if it builds below can flush, right? So here was NVIDIA. Right, so here was NVIDIA. Again, we recognize the inverted hammer. So here is NVIDIA, right? So the 4640 was this whole rising support. Once it lost the 4640, stock traded all the way down, all the way down to like the three 390. What is it? What's the low of the day? Did I did I get that wrong? Uh, yeah, it went all the way down to 398. Right, went all the way down to 398. So you had an eight dollar you had an eight dollar move uh, towards the back end of the day, and that's kind of the whole point going into tomorrow's session. I want to see if we can. If it can confirm back this whole bottom channel, and if it does, there might be one more day of back testing. Again, we're looking for value. I don't care which side the, the stock trades, as long as it's giving us a, a clear path to the goal line, and we are trading with in line with the futures. You don't want to trade against the futures. So going into tomorrow, again, it's going to be a little bit hard to find the long bias volume 
uh, value. Uh, I do understand, and I'm not naive, a lot of stocks are going nuts. We're participating in the nutness. I would rather, pause, I would rather uh, wait for a dip into rising support uh, then put myself in a situation of buying strength on something overextended. Again, keep this in mind. You jump off the first floor and you get hurt. You get a scraped knee. You jump off the 12th floor today, right? You might get a severed head. Guys, God bless. Stay safe and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.